I have three phones. I'm ashamed of this, but the iPhone, I really hate all web browsers. There's like none I'd recommend, but the one I use. I wanna welcome Chris today from Chris Titus Tech. He has an amazing YouTube channel where he talks about FOSS, Linux, and pretty much everything else in the tech space that a lot of you are probably gonna care about. So we're gonna start today off, Chris, with your messenger. Is there a favorite messenger you have or several of them? Well, uh, for the most part, I use all signal except for like a couple like stragglers. I still have some uh, web uh, email that I go through. So some remnants of old Google Hangouts that got integrated. So occasionally I'll get a, like two people I talk to through there. But for the most part, most people actually uh, talk to me through Signal. I'm kind of a minimalist. So honestly, if I was looking at it, I probably would actually end up uh, just not using any messenger or going old school and going back to like IC, uh, ICQ or it maybe even MIRC and just going back to like a plain text IRC server. Uh, if I was going to go back into like really deep into the, the chat uh, realm of things or messaging back and forth. So for more formal stuff, your email, do you have a favorite email provider? I hate all email. <laughs> <laughs> I really like, most of I do. but uh, a lot of times I still end up using the old Gmail occasionally will get redirected to uh, something that's stored on Google servers actually. So I have so, a business email that just has like a $5 a month Google uh, business plan basically associated with it for, for odds and ends. I have set up a lot of different email servers and, and even looked at redirecting that. At one time I hosted it myself using um, uh, mail bagging through a different service to basically catch it. So if my server did go down, it would still catch all incoming mail. And then it would deliver it to like my Synology box. I think they have something called Mail Plus that you can actually host your own email if you wanted to be completely private. But for the most part, most of my day is spent now just, uh, I would say with Gmail open occasionally, but I'd make it a point to only check my email twice a day once in the afternoon, you know, actually probably midday, and then once in the evening, and that's it. And that's all I check my email. I don't really check it on my phone, and I don't really check it any other time, just those two times a day. So I do miss a lot of emails, but uh, I find my productivity has skyrocketed ever since I started doing that. Is there anything that um, holds you back from using some of the private email providers? My main issue with the private email, because I've had to deal with a lot of email throughout the course of my career. And a lot of people, you're gonna be interfacing with typically Microsoft or Google with almost every email you send. Uh, one of it's gonna hit a relay server somewhere. If it's not with you, it's, it's with somebody else. And that basically means that copy of email resides on the internet regardless. And I know that's a scary prospect for many and having your own private email, I, I would think uh, is fine, but I think I, I just don't, I don't trust them. Uh, you know, I, I know that sounds kind of crazy. Like I know probably the biggest one is like Proton Mail. I know a lot of people use it and some of the other ones. And I just, I can't bring myself to open up an account with, with some something I don't control. If I was really concerned with privacy and security, I'd want to handle it end to end. And even then, that email's probably gonna be hitting one of the big ones, either Microsoft or Google anyways. And uh, I don't really see much of a benefit by taking on that extra workload. So you mentioned you didn't check email on your phone. So let's talk about your phone. What phone do you have? Does it have, what OS does it run? What's your phone like? Well, I laugh because I have three phones and it's, it's, it's a lot like my computers, which I'm sure we'll get to, but I have, I, I, uh, uh, I'm ashamed of this, but the iPhone, I just tried it this past month and I haven't ever tried like an iPhone since the iPhone three, but I use it now as the daily driver for the past month, which I'm going to be making a video about that soon, but I've used Android for pretty much as long as it's been around. And then I've also bought like PinePhone Pro, got that. And I've been messing around with it, uh, trying to make the, the Linux phone scene happen. I made a couple videos about this back in the day, you know, it's probably about a year or two ago now, but just taking an old Pixel. And that's what I main mainly drove for about the past three or four years is Google Pixel phones and switching those into like 
Calyx OS or Graphene OS is usually those privacy and security aspects. But a lot of times, uh, I didn't really like being untethered from Google as much as I thought I would. And <laughs> uh, a lot of times the conveniences I give up, I was just like, oh, okay, I'm going to go back to this. And then, you know, I, I still want to make the Linux phone happen. And my main benefits, not so much the privacy security aspect of it, but mainly just getting it to where I could use this phone as like a secondary computer. That's the big thing. I would love to just take this interface with like another monitor somewhere and then plug it in and have like my whole desktop there at, off of my phone. And then you also use it as a phone. So what about your desktop OS then? Uh, desktop OS, I, I do daily drive all three. Windows is what I use for a lot of my recording production because I use a lot of proprietary Elgato stuff that I filter through it. Uh, the Mac I mainly use for editing using Final Cut Pro. And then I'm my main system here on the studio PC is Linux. Uh, right now it's Fedora based. Uh, just Fedora server with a BSPWM window manager and the bare minimum. I love that because it, it just makes me much more productive. And then uh, I also have a fourth computer uh, if I need to play games or stream specific Windows line of business apps. I actually stream that from uh, a Windows server basically that sits there. So I'm in all three every single day, which I know sounds crazy to many, but it's just how I operate and it's uh, no compromises. Uh, situation for your password manager what's the situation like here uh, I hate password managers too I mean my wife actually still uses a book and writes them all down I have so many passwords that's not gonna work so I was on LastPass for a bit and then I switched to RoboForm which uh, I've been using for a while and I liked RoboForm for the automation and then I think most of the people in my community would would talk about Bitwarden and I've tried Bitwarden but I I always end up coming back to RoboForm, and I think it's partially from the automation, but also partially it's one of my very first password manager because I think I was using it back in, I wanna say like Windows XP. It's been around since the 2000s. So it was one of my originals and I get a little bit of nostalgia and also it, the fact that they've evolved the software and it does fill in everything automatically for me fairly easily with no mess. What about your VPN? Do you use a VPN? Ah, uh, you know, about, I don't really use it for privacy or security. Um, there might be the occasional torrent or something here, but uh, usually if I'm doing that, it'll be, I think I'm using like a mainstream one. I don't really care too much about VPNs, uh, but I'll use, I think like Express VPN. And I usually set up a black box for that to where, let's say I, I want to use a torrent or, or any kind of like thing like that. I'll usually set up uh, a Docker container that is isolated on a separate network and I'll set up uh, firewall rules that basically say if a VPN's not connected, you can't access the internet or access anything outside of the local subnet. And then as soon as that's established, it'll bam, kick out and then, uh, you know, do whatever that Docker container or, or black box basically is meant to do. So it's my way of isolating to where if I am gonna use a VPN, I make sure it's isolated on either a separate VM or a uh, Docker container that uh, I never have to worry about it uh, co-mingling with my local traffic. And what about your desktop browser or browsers? I hate browsers. I really hate all web browsers. There's like none I'd recommend but the one I use is Brave. I like the fact it had a built-in ad blocker. I was like, okay, cool. If you can get past like a lot of the crypto crap that comes with it, it's not terrible, is basically the biggest endorsement I can give. <laughs> you know? browser. Yeah. Not terrible. <laughs> yeah. And how about the mobile side of things? Do you also use Brave there or do you use a different setup for mobile? Um, no, for the mobile, most like Brave mobile is awful. Like it's just a terrible experience. Almost all the Chromium ones I've noticed um, don't have a true mobile browser. If I'm on an iPhone, I use Safari. If I'm on Android, I will use the stock Chrome or uh, DuckDuckGo if it's there sometimes. But I, I don't know. I, mobile browsers are kind of a joke to me. I'm always kind of like... If you're in iOS or you're in Android, you're pretty much screwed anyways. And I'm just like, all right, I'll just pull this up. But I rarely check anything on my phone if I'm gonna be using a browser. I just try to keep it limited. 
And the final thing, what's the search engine that you prefer on your browsers? Google. <laughs> Just straight up Google. Pure pure evil Googleness. I mean, I still love checking like, you know, sometimes I'll go to DuckDuckGo and I'll be like, is global warming a fraud or something like that? An ambiguous question that you know they've curated the results for. And it's fun to see the more private search engines versus a Google one where, you know, it'll actually redirect you to, uh, you know, uh, a scientific center where a lot of these other ones will actually use those words and find websites with those words global warming client is you know this uh, hopefully you don't get demonetized just saying that out loud now i'm saying it <laughs> but uh th that's a fun one to kind of test your browsers and how the search engines operate differently was there anything that we missed that you think is an important part of your configuration um, I, I think probably the biggest thing for me is just kind of compartmentalization. I think it's lost on so many people that when it comes to any kind of security and privacy, uh, a lot of people make fun of me because I kind of like all over the place. But at the same time, most things are compartmentalized. There's not a lot of crosstalk around the stuff that I use. So where I fail in one area is a lot of times it's compartmentalized in that area. What I find so many people do is they just sync everything to all devices. It always ends badly for that scenario because inevitably it, you're locked into whatever ecosystem you choose to sync. And I try to kind of keep my options open. I always say, use the best tool or the right tool for the right job. And uh, that's the thing where I think a lot of people get stuck on, oh, I need to use this for this certain thing because that'll be more private or secure. And a lot of times what you can do is just use the right tool, the best tool, but compartmentalize it if it does have a, a lax privacy policy or uh, it it wants to snoop on you. If you s isolate that out, I think uh, Snowden uh, said, you know, Cubes OS, one of the best ways you can do it because everything can be compartmentalized in VMs. Just to finish things out, do you want to tell everyone what Chris Titus Tech is and what you do? So a lot of times my channel revolves around just having fun with technology. Uh, I go out, I make scripts uh, for like windows to debloat them, remove a lot of the telemetry and spying stuff through it. i am also do a lot of Linux content because I absolutely love living in Linux and kind of using it for my daily productivity. And then also uh, just general purpose stuff. Anything that could be fun with technology is kind of what my channel is about. Very cool. And we're going to leave links down in the description for all of you to go ahead and check out his stuff because it's just great and we're big fans of it.